Friday Night Stars, presented by Whataburger, is brought to you by Texas Lottery. Play the Dallas Cowboys scratch ticket today. It's your ticket for a chance to win big. And by Whataburger. Head over to your hometown Whataburger and try the patty milk. They may not have been the first to think up this classic sandwich, but they put a pretty tasty spin on it. It is time for another edition of Friday Night Stars brought to you by a Whataburger from inside the Globe Life studio here at the Star in Frisco. Bill Jones along with Kyle Yeomans as we work our way through the month of October. And Kyle Yeomans, it will be playoff time a month from now. <laughs> wow, wait, a month from now? Even a little bit less than a month, right? I mean, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. These district races are starting to take shape. You have so many different storylines heading into this week eight of Texas high school football. It's so exciting. This is the best time of year as the temperature starts to drop a little bit. It too. dropped, but it, it rose all of a sudden. That's the middle of the week this week. Uh, but uh, we've got indoor games as well to talk about when we get to our showdowns at the star. Kyle Yeoman's very much a part of that production tonight and also on a Friday night. Let's start, though, with our Whataburger game of the week and let's take you to the beautiful Allen Eagles Stadium where the Allen Eagles will be hosting McKinney and this is a battle of two teams that are unbeaten in District 5-6A. And both teams with a five game winning streak as well. We'll start with the Allen Eagles number five team in the area at the moment. They're led on the ground attack and what they've been able to do behind Kavion Sibby 100 or 800 yards nine touchdowns this year. He's got offers and interest from across the country but locally with Texas Tech and TCU as well. This is an Allen team that has not lost to McKinney since 1999, and they don't plan on keeping that, uh, or they don't plan on losing that streak anytime soon. But I really like what this Lions team brings to the table. Two guys that out of the backfield run the football exceptionally well, much like the Allen Eagles. They rely on the ground game and what they're able to do there. Brian Jackson, 1,000 yards and 15 touchdowns this year. Talk about interest from across the country. Alabama, Oklahoma, Auburn, all of them had his front doorstep and in his mailbox trying to get him to go and play for him. And then you got Keldrick Luster at the quarterback position, a dual threat quarterback who played here at Frisco Liberty last year. He's a guy that can really uh, elevate their ground attack and also elevate the game through the air. I like the Lions, and this might be a, t uh, a game that's the first one to 20 or the first one to 200 on the ground because both teams can run the football. You, you like the Lions in this game? I might actually pick the Lions in this game. All right. I like hey, the Allen Eagles Luster. too. Yeah, Keldrick Luster. Uh, they put up 60 last week against yeah, Braswell, and he had 386 through the air and 92 on the ground. You put me on the spot a little bit there, but I'll <laughs> double down. Give me the McKinney Lions to pull the upset in this matchup because they have a little bit more to play for. There's that anti-tradition of not winning against the Eagles since 1999, but they have so much firepower that if Allen does sleep a little on this McKinney squad, give me the Lions to make the upset. And the this Allen week. Eagles can't be looking, keep, be caught looking ahead to Geyer next week, their next opponent in that district. All right, let's move on to District 6, 6A, and that would be the Fighting Farmers of Louisville against a resurgent. Plano Senior High Wildcats squad of Coach Todd Ford. Yeah, District 6 6A is starting to ramp up as well. I really like both of these squads. And we'll start with Louisville. I'll, I'll, I'll tap them the underrated because last week against Coppell, they showed that it's not only their firepower, but their defense can certainly show up. They held the Coppell Cowboys to a season low three points, 220 yards total. 38 to 3 was that fire, final score. And I really like their running back, Viron Ellison. 800 yards rushing, eight touchdowns on the year. They're starting to catch fire after that week two loss against Highland Park. Watch out for the fighting farmers this season, but it's been a while since we've talked about the Plano Wildcats. I like Plano overall because they've got wins. They've beaten Hebron. They've beaten Plano West and Plano East. They've taken care of the in-town rivalries, but could they take the driver's seat with a win over Louisville? They certainly could, but the competition hasn't been the same. They haven't played a team as good as the fighting farmers, so keep that in mind whenever you have Drew Forkner 
nine passing touchdowns and just one interception on the year. They've got a balanced offense, and the, the Wildcats look pretty good this year. And uh, one of those two Plano losses on the year came early in the season against Byron Nelson. We'll have much yeah. more on Byron Nelson coming up later in the show. They are unbeaten on the season. Moving on to District 11 6A, and the Duncanville Panthers will be playing host to the unbeaten Mansfield Tigers. Mm, I like this, and this is the District of Doom is what they like <laughs> to call it uh, around those parts. And I, it's October, so you can get a little spooky with it because Duncanville's always been spooky. But I like Mansfield as a surprise team this season. 6-0, and oh, James Johnson on the ground. He's been fantastic at the running back spot. But don't forget about the outside game with Jacob Hayes that they bring to the table. He's had 17 receptions, six of which that have gone to pay dirt for a touchdown. And he's gotten nearly 400 yards pat or receiving this year as well. So along with Johnson, the, the wide receiver combo there with Jacob Hayes as well is something fun to look at. But they've gotten wins over Cedar Hill and Summit and Lake Ridge, but no bigger test than this Duncanville Panther squad. Death taxes Duncanville being good on defense. They do it again every year underneath Reginald Samples. They come back and they continue to show that they do not give up yardage. 178 yards per game uh, on the defensive side of the football allowed. That's a big reason on how well they've played along with running the football. I mean, Caden Durham been a workhorse in the backfield. 62 carries this year, 500 yards, seven touchdowns. They slow teams down and then they get after him on the defensive side of the football. You talk about the District of Doom and Mansfield now as we get closer to Halloween, they realize <laughs> what that District of Doom is all about with Duncanville this week. Watts a hatchy next week and then after a game against Skyline they will close the season against uh, DeSoto but Duncanville coming off that 24 to 7 win over Watts a hatchy that was a very close game at halftime before they were able to pull away in the second half. How about another battle of unbeatens a team you're very familiar with Emerson out of the Frisco ISD playing host to Argyle tonight at Toyota Stadium. Yeah this is going to be a really fun game because these are two of the three undefeateds in that district 3 5A division 2 along with Frisco Independence who of course we'll talk about a little bit later, but I'll start with Argyle. They're starting to pick up steam a little bit, and it's hard to say that when they're undefeated and they're 6-0 and and it's Argyle as the number one ranked team in the state, but the more this season goes along, the better they play, the better they find their identity. They took down an undefeated Lake Dallas team last week, R.J. Bunnell and company, that running back and that tandem in the backfield, 13 touchdowns, 865 yards rushing, and they're running behind a big offensive line which I think will have the advantage over Emerson in this ball game. I got to see Emerson last week when they held on very tight in a ball game against Frisco Memorial. That size is going to take some time to stand up against Argyle, but I really like the Emerson story. It's the first Frisco ISD team to have a winning record ever in their first season as a program. They're 7-0, and so it's not just a winning record. They're undefeated and they continue to win, but this is by far their biggest test to date because before that it was probably Memorial or Hillcrest, and they've got to find a way to get Izzy Bills in the backfield going. They fed him last week 17 carries for 53 yards. Uh, say that name again. Izzy Bills. I'm not going to say the first name because it's Aish. I, I'm not gonna start. It's but, something. But Izzy. Just call him Izzy. Izzy. Izzy Bills. Is yeah. what he, that's what he likes to be called, so that's what I'm going to call All him. All right. Izzy Bills, <laughs> who has 706 yards rushing, 151 receiving yeah. on the uh, season. All right. We're just getting started on this edition of Friday Night Stars. When we come back, it's those showdowns at the Star. This segment was brought to you by Whataburger. Head over to your hometown Whataburger and try the patty milk. They may not have been the first to think up this classic sandwich, but they put a pretty tasty spin on it. This segment is brought to you by Texas Lottery. Play the Dallas Cowboys scratch ticket today. It's your ticket for a chance to win big. Time to take a look at our showdowns at the star this week and we're just moments away from kickoff inside Ford Center. What to date is the biggest showdown of the year for Frisco ISD heritage against Frisco High. More on that in just a second. And then the Friday night game which Kyle Yeomans will also be calling as the Memorial Warriors taking on the undefeated Independence Knights. Of course Frisco ISD featured every Thursday and Friday night throughout the regular season 
at Ford Center here at the Star in Frisco. And welcome back to Friday Night Stars. Bill Jones with Kyle Yeomans. And uh, how about a little look at this little matchup tonight? Yeah, this one's by far the biggest. The winner of this one will keep pace with the Reedy Lions for the lead in District 5, 5A Division 1. And re you really look at both of these teams coming from different situations. You have the Frisco Raccoons who are used to being there, used to having that tradition. Then on the other side for Frisco Heritage, this is a team that has had one year improvements over the last four years going from one win to four wins and then this year they're at six and one but it's no surprise that head coach Jeff Harbert and the Frisco Raccoons are back in the hunt for a district crown looking for their third straight as they have a big matchup and a big hurdle against the Coyotes tonight. They've done so by relying on two main points. They've done so in the trenches and they've done so with their tradition from being what they call the original. I feel like we've got uh, more tradition and, and the people that have lived in Frisco a long time, they kind of hang their hat on the Frisco raccoons. And, and so we feel, uh, we feel fortunate to, to have that history for us. So uh, it's definitely uh, an added bonus uh, for us and, and carries more weight to us when we go out there and, and represent, you know, the 120 years of history that Frisco High has that, you know, a lot of the other Frisco schools don't have. I grew up going to middle school with all the Reedy kids and I came here and uh, so I personally, I believe our, our rivals Reedy, or they're, they're my rival at least, and I want to beat them every year I can. Uh, I feel like we're a great team. Uh, they, obviously on the defense side of the ball, uh, we bring a lot with our D-line. Our D-line is our strongest point right now, I would say, but we're all coming along together. We're just trying to bond as a team so we can get right for playoffs. And he's exactly right. The strength of that Raccoons team is in the trenches. They've got a big offensive line led by some Division I recruits up there. And then they've got a front seven that's extremely versatile. They're quick to the football, and they stay disciplined no matter what the scheme is that they go up against. Heritage is going to try and spread things out. They're going to try and get to the outside and use some of their weapons off of the edge. But there's guys like Brandon Maiazono off of that Raccoon second level who plays a little bit of everywhere. He plays linebacker, wide receiver, running back, quarterback, corner, and safety that I've charted at least this year at one point. Well, he's all over the place. He's the true definition of an athlete. And uh, for Frisco, this starts a very tough stretch to close out the season. They got Heritage at six and one, then Reedy seven and zero. Oh, Lone Stars four and two right now. And Wakeland is a 500 team so far this season. All right, when we come back here on Friday Night Stars, some other notable games, and will you take you to Keller for a big matchup between the Keller Indians and the Byron Nelson Bobcats? This segment was brought to you by Texas Lottery. Play the Dallas Cowboys scratch ticket today. It's your ticket for a chance to win big. This segment is brought to you by Whataburger. Head over to your hometown Whataburger and try the patty melt. They may not have been the first to think up this classic sandwich, but they put a pretty tasty spin on it. Let's take a look at some other notable games around the area this week as Friday Night Stars continues. Ennis travels to Midlothian to take on Heritage. It's Forney at Lancaster, Flower Mound and Hebron. Kyle Yeomans, which of these games grabs your attention? Yeah, I really think it's that Forney and Lancaster matchup. Right now, that's the battle for second place in District 7, 5A, Division 1. Trying to keep pace with Longview. Longview's a couple games ahead, so it's going to be really tough for either one of those teams to make up some of that ground. But Lancaster allowing just 15 points per game. Two really good defenses because uh, you look at the Jackrabbits too. They're not much higher than that 15 points per game mark. So both teams looking to lock down what the other one's going to bring out there offensively and see what they can do. All right, let's uh, let's take a look at what is an interesting uh, playoff uh, race in District 3-6A as uh, we had one of our games of the week last week. Keller took South Lake Carroll right down to the wire, 38-35. Keller this week plays Byron Nelson, and Byron Nelson is putting up unbelievable numbers this season. Yeah, this is a really, really fun matchup. Keller specifically, I mean, a team that a lot of people overlooked at 5-0. and They went into that game undefeated against South Lake, and uh, even though there, there, there is some talent on that side, they just didn't think they would stand up as well as they did against the, the Dragons. But Carroll, they were pushed all the way to the edge. That's the biggest challenge they've faced to this point in the season. The Indians went after it and got after them on the ground. They were able to run the football effectively. Really, really fun matchup last week. But then they turn around, and after they are able to handle South Lake, Carroll, and the Dragons, what challenge do they have in front of them? Byron Nelson, who is just lighting it up from all over the yard. They run the football well, but really 2,000 yards passing to this point in the season from Jacob Wilson and that 
that air attack, they will air raid the football and they will put up points as well. They've done it against each opponent they have they've faced all year long. And their last two games, they've scored 69 and 65 points. One other note that came out of that uh, Keller Southlake Carroll game last week: Carroll lost its starting quarterback, Caden uh, Caden Anderson, to a knee injury. All right, great game between North Crowley and Fort Worth Boswell last Friday. North Crowley, known for its defense, certainly made quite a statement against the team from Saginaw. The Panthers' defense stopped multiple Boswell scoring threats, forcing turnovers. Both Caleb Hickman and Galen McNeil picked off passes in the end zone. North Crowley was clinging to a 21-17 lead when Boswell put together one more drive, 25 seconds left, facing a fourth and goal from the four, and the pass was broken up in the end zone. North Crowley celebrates the 21-17 win to keep its undefeated season alive at 6-0. I knew it was coming my way. I knew I had to make a play, I had to step up. I know I had to, and I know I can let my team down big play. I love my defense. I love them so much. They help us. They stopped. They stayed. They helped us stay in the game. And just overall, just I appreciate everything they've done. We challenge our guys. We challenge them. We're chasing greatness. You know, and we've built something right now. Offensively, defensively, um, we're one of the top defenses in the area. We're a top five offense. And so what we've done over the last five weeks, six weeks now, is we've created the type of momentum that it gives us something to fight for. They play defense at North Crowley. Samaje Burl, a Texas commit, is the real deal. And then I was watching some video of this. This number two, the tight end for them, Camorian Pimpton. He is yeah. committed to Vanderbilt, 6'6", 220 pounds. Just last week he got offers from Auburn and LSU. I looked at the video and said, who's that guy? He's, he's pretty impressive athletic. And he stands out, especially yeah. at that level. And these guys, of course, I mean, those SEC schools know to churn out NFL tight ends, including Vandy, who's had a couple over the last couple of years. But you talk about those that team right there with North Crowley. It's all about the defense. 206 yards per game allowed. They do not give up scores. They do not give up yardage. They're fourth ranked in the area. And just listening to the coach right there makes me know exactly why they play such good defense. It's got me fired up. I'm ready to go out there and make a hit and make a tackle. <laughs> all right, and you're fired up for your power programs. <laughs> I am. Coming up next here on Friday Night Stars. All right, time for our power programs here on Friday Night Stars, and this is the definition of power. We can do anything we want to with our <laughs> list. Okay, so the ever-powerful Kyle Yeomans, who do you have on your list this week? I promised it previously. It's time to show the small schools, and I put that in quotations, small schools some love. These are the undefeateds of 4A and below around the area. It starts off with Anna. Oh my goodness, this Anna squad can put up points as well. They've been really, really good. Caddo Mills, Paradise, Whitesboro, Palmer, Gunter, all of these teams have run the table to this point in the season. Now, a couple of these games are going to come down to the wire recently. They're going to have some very, very fun matchups as we get deeper into this season. But these are the ones that have dominated to this point. So I did the 6A and 5A undefeateds previously. I wanted to show some love on the small schools. And how about we show some love to the private schools as well? My power programs are the private powers, and it starts with Parish Episcopal, of course, defending state champs. Their only loss was against uh, South Oak Cliff in a very, very close game. They beat Alito. They beat Austin LBJ early in the uh, season at 5-1 and one on the year. I've got Episcopal School of Dallas, and where do they play? They play, of course, at Gene and Jerry Jones Family Field, our there stadium there at ESD in Dallas. And how about about Jason Witten's Liberty Christian team out in Argyle, six and one on the season. Their only loss came against Episcopal School of Dallas, 20 to 17. In fact, they count among one of their wins, Preston Wood Christian. My number four team on the list is PCA, and uh, their only loss on the season was against uh, Jason Witten's squad. They take on Fort Worth Nolan this week, and then uh, going down to Taps Division Three out of Fort Worth, Lake Country Christian, six and zero. Oh. They've got a big showdown game with Lubbock Trinity Christian this mm, week. I like that a lot. Now that's the thing about the Taps area in Dallas and in Fort Worth is. These are schools that could certainly compete with some of the big names. I mean, we saw it with Parish Episcopal. They've won a couple states.
state championships in a row and then they go off and they beat at, uh, Alito this year and they're able to play against these high profile opponents from the 4A and 5A ranks and keep up with it. It's not just Parrish that can do that. It's Argyle Liberty Christian and Prestonwood and a lot of these other schools around the area. It shows there's many options out there for students and That's the right. transfer portal is alive and well <laughs> from public school to private school if they want to here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. All right, when we come back here on Friday Night Stars, our Landry Award watch list for this week. Friday Night Stars, presented by Whataburger, was brought to you by Texas Lauder. Play the Dallas Cowboys scratch ticket today. It's your ticket for a chance to win big. And by Whataburger. Head over to your hometown Whataburger and try the patty milk. They may not have been the first to think up this classic sandwich, but they put a pretty tasty spin on it. Each week here on Friday Night Stars, we put an exclamation point on the show by giving you our Landry Award watch list for this week. The Landry Award voting will take place at the end of the regular season. Goes to the best high school football player in North Texas and our area passing leaders on the list this week. This puts the exclamation point on some of our games of the week this week because yeah. we got the Byron Nelson quarterback Jake Wilson and the Anna quarterback Evan Bullock on there and Anna, you gave a shout out to them in your power program. And he's a big reason behind their success and Evan Bullock has been great all year long but every week up until this point I have said this is not just a quarterback award it really isn't you can win it as a running back as a defender a wide receiver it's open to anybody but it's hard to ignore quarterbacks when you've got guys like this throwing the football around I mentioned Jacob Wilson he's been putting up unbelievable numbers to this point in the season he needs to get the recognition and you already mentioned Evan Bullock and a couple of those other names on the list there are a lot of great quarterbacks in the area you're in good hands as playoffs come around you get into these district battles coming up and for Byron Nelson and Jake Wilson this week's game against Keller and a couple of weeks against South Lake Carroll, he can move up, move up on the list even more. That does it for Friday Night Stars for this week. For Kyle Yeomans, I'm Bill Jones, and we will see you again next week.